Hey, Dory, how's it going? Oh, I'm so awesome. I always look forward to Mondays now, Dr. Ken, when we get to hang out with you. Heck yeah. We're super excited this week. And my people want to talk about your carnivore challenge. And they're struggling. So I would love to talk to you about kind of some of the things that they're encountering and maybe if we can get around them so that if they want to continue, they can. Sure, absolutely. So, Tell me, how are they struggling? Well, first issue I'm going to say that's coming up is is diarrhea. Now, I know we, talk, we can't <clears throat> talk about too much, Dr. Ken, but is this normal? Is, is it normal? Should they be experiencing... Anytime you, anytime you shift your diet, you can have a few days of diarrhea. A lot of people, you may remember when you went keto, you had a few days of diarrhea. That's okay. That's, that's acceptable. That's, that's a normal thing. After about day four or five, that should be tapering off and going away. So okay. if, if, if this is day, what, four and five for most people, if, if the diarrhea is, you know, tapering down, getting better, then it's nothing to worry about. Even if it continues, it's still nothing to worry about. I mean, some people have diarrhea for the first month, they go keto, right? But that doesn't mean they should stop keto. It just means they've got some stubborn gut bacteria that don't like it and are protesting, right? And so if the only thing you're having is some diarrhea and you're not having severe cramps or severe belly pain or you know anything like that, I think it's fine to, to carnivore on. But if you're having belly pain, cramping, and you just don't feel good, then maybe carnivore is not for you. Okay. And how do we decide the difference? Because what I'm hearing is kind of a combination of, it's like, oh, I'm having bathroom issues. I'm bloated. You know, I'm getting leg cramping. I'm having cravings I didn't have. I, I'm just generally miserable, Dory. What do I do? Yeah. So if somebody feels that bad, they should just go back to keto and forget it. Okay. And that's fair enough, right? Yeah. Let's let's talk yeah. about that for a minute. Is there any shame in that? No, you know, not at all. We, it, we, we really work? we were talking about this, and we wish we had called it a carnivore experiment, not a carnivore challenge, because it's no defeat if you if if carnivore is not made for you, and you're not made for carnivore. That's yeah, actually you learn something by doing this. You learn that that's not for you, right? And so I think that's a victory. That's not a defeat by any means. You need to know which particular kind of keto is your keto. And the only way to know that is to try the, all the different flavors of keto. And I, I love yes. I love keto for that very reason is that you can do a veg heavy keto. You can do a vegetarian keto, not vegan, but vegetarian with eggs and fish and stuff like that. You can do a veg heavy. You can do a medium veg. You can do a, a fatty meat heavy keto or you can do carnivore. All of those are keto, right? It's just different styles of keto. Which one fits you best? That's the one you've got to experiment around and find out for yourself. Well, and I even believe you could do a vegan keto if you want to. It's still the same concept. So find your own perfect keto. Just, you know, keep your fats high, keep your carbs really low, and experiment with what other foods work for you. Now, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about carnivore as an elimination diet. Because it's a thought that never really occurred to me before, but now that everybody's, you know, kind of trying it as an experiment or as a challenge, the thought occurs to me that this would be a great elimination diet. Mm -hmm. So it let's is. talk a little bit about that instead of, you know, as a weight loss goal, if you wanted to use carnivore for elimination, how would that look and how would we ease things back in after full elimination? So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I don't think carnivore is an elimination diet, but I think it can be used for that. And you can actually learn a lot more about yourself and about your gut. So after you've done carnivore for a month or two and you add back in the brassicas then, and everything's fine, your gut's fine, you're like, okay, that's good. Then you add back in some nightshades, some peppers or tomatoes, and you're like, ooh, my gut didn't like that. There's a red flag. There you go. You may have a nightshade issue. Or if you add back in some nuts and your gut doesn't like that, there you go. That may be part of your problem because not everybody who eats a ketogenic diet can eat nuts. Some people just need to leave them alone. <clears throat> Same yes. goes with any kind of liquid dairy. Uh, after a month, and, I, and I, I've recommended everybody do their carnivore with only butter and ghee. Don't use any heavy cream if you can, uh, 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 if you can help it. And that way you can actually add heavy cream back in at the end and that'll that's part of the elimination experiment. And then if you start having gut issues, bloating, and you 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 know you stall, 
there you go. The heavy cream is a problem. Uh, and so there's so many different ways that you can do that and add back in one thing at a time and give it a day or two and see, am I okay with that? Did that cause any gastric distress or not? And then you can actually eliminate another two or three things that your gut isn't that happy with, but you were eating other things mixed with it and you just didn't know. Nice. Now, I, I know this is kind of more of a, a Dory question <clears throat> than a Dr. Ken question, but somebody asked me and I wanted to share this with you for Nisha because I saw her video the other day and she said that her biggest struggle right now is the sweetener in the coffee. She's like, clearly I'm having the second cup, so whatever, but I'm not enjoying it. And someone asked me, Dory, what can I do for my my carnivore coffee that's going to taste a little better. And I did something the other day that was so yummy. I made a salted butter rum coffee. So I added butter. I added a little bit of rum flavor extract and I added pink salt. And mm. it really took away that where I was looking for the sweet in a coffee and it replaced it with just a buttery salty and it all it was so good. And I thought Nisha needs to try that. Yeah, that's a man, great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. You could also do a, a little peppermint because that's not sweet, right? Yes. Do a little spearmint. And my, my daily coffee now is butter and, and a pinch of salt. That's my daily coffee whipped up with a little frother. And I love it now. I, I don't even really like it that much with sweetener anymore. There's any number of flavors that you can make a more savory coffee. You just don't want the sweetness. That's what you're trying to avoid. Awesome. Now, I, I this is kind of a little personal advice and it's something backfired on me once. Put a sweetener you don't like in your coffee one time and you'll never like it again. <laughs> I, I asked someone for advice over what sweetener was good for coffee. And she was like, oh, Zytol Dory, it's the bomb. I did it one time. It was the first time I ever threw away half of a Bulletproof coffee. And since then, which is almost a full year ago, I have never put a sweetener in my coffee again. Just the thought of sweet coffee actually grosses me out. Yeah. So put something gross in it one time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> one time. <laughs> one time so we have a few questions about fats on carnivore as well so should should we be avoiding the standards that we're always using coconut oil avocado oil um olive oil or is it still okay to have those things and apple cider vinegar or if we're strict carnivore should it be no thank you so i think a little apple cider vinegar in your keterade or if you use it for for heartburn is fine but okay. there are plenty of animal-based fats. You don't need to use the, the coconut avocado MCT oil because then you're not carnivore anymore. Why not just use butter, okay. ghee, and bacon grease, lard. You can also use tallow from, from sheep or from beef, right, renderings. And okay. so all of those are delicious fats. They're very, very good sources of, of, of saturated fatty acids and uh, – both mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. They're, they're, they're actually, everybody thinks that animal fat's just 100% saturated fat. It's not true at all. They have a blend of fats, right? And so there's no point in using those. Use another fat that's animal-based. Awesome. And I, I made a <laughs> carnivore shrimp recipe the other day because I realized every recipe that I put out there, even if it's a meat recipe or a shrimp recipe, and I was hunting for things without vegetables in my YouTube so I could post them for people. And I realized everything I make, I usually use either avocado oil or I use olive oil or I use coconut oil. So I made one specifically with butter fat and um, rendered bacon so mm. that, you know, we can try and... So I, I'm going to try to do that over the next couple of weeks to put out a few. So I, I might message you a couple of times and say, hey, Dr. Ken, what do you think of that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, sounds great. So, now, what tips do you have um, if people are joining along with you in the challenge? So today's the sixth. Most <clears> people started with you on the fifth. They're day six. They're kind of starting to hit their stride. But if they have any bumps along the way, do you have any videos they can look at? Is there anywhere specific that they can comment to ask you questions? Yeah, I've got a couple of, I think, two or three carnivore videos on the YouTube channel now. And okay. Nisha and I, we've done two or three lives on the Facebook page that they can go back and watch about okay. carnivore on my Facebook page. And then there's a, a ton of questions answered on that as well. It's really simple. Eat only meat. Eat fatty meat. Eat fatty meat until you're full 
when you're full, stop eating. And like, you don't have to count macros. You don't have to worry about protein. Just try it. Try what you're trying to do is get as much fat as you can, but you don't have to track anything. Okay. Well, an Astor, Cindy said something the other day that made me giggle. If it has eyes or if it's going to have eyes, it's carnivore. That's, it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> She's exactly right. Yep. If it ever had eyes or if it's a going to have eyes, that's carnivore. Yeah. No. If, if we decide we want a little bit of dairy in our carnivore, we're not going to go super, super strict. How much qualifies as a little? Because I'm not going to lie, cheese is life. And for me, yeah. a little is probably more than most people would consider a little. So how much can we safely incorporate? I don't think you really have to uh, limit your butter or your ghee at all. And, okay. of course, those are dairy. Uh, fatty, full-fat cheeses from the deli, not from the dairy case, I think are fine to use okay. a little bit for flavor. And I by a little bit, like when Nisha and I, when we get the Parmesan in the grater, it looks like a dump truck is backed up and dumped the Parmesan out, okay? So when we say a little, we're talking about a handful per person, okay. right? We, we love Parmesan. But any of the full fat cheeses that are, that are truly okay. full fat aged cheeses, right? Like Parmesan, Swiss, cheddar, all those guys that come from the deli or they come from the cheese, right? We're not talking about the dairy case. And so cream yeah. cheese, ricotta cheese, sour cream, all that stuff is too much dairy and not enough fat for okay. the carnivore challenge, okay? And so, but if you if you want some real full fat cheese that's like an actual aged cheese, I think that's fine to have on carnivore. Okay. Now, I have a question because somebody asked me if I could figure out how to build a carnivore pizza. So that mm -hmm. is um, apparently yeah. my next challenge. So That's my doable. question is, is a little bit of sauce okay? Or am I going to have to find something instead of a tomato sauce? You'll have to, have, to, you'll have to make pizza. an Alfredo sauce pizza. Okay. Right? A more of a you creamy. I think I could pull that off. Right. Maybe and you like could have, a barbecue like, chicken Alfredo something. Right. And you could have your, your crust made out of crushed meat skins. And then you know how they make the chicken crust. Yes. You could do that with some meat skins and, and it might actually have a little crunch to it. And then your toppings, you could just at your liberty. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to try it because you know me, I, I love requests. So I just was curious and I thought, well, I don't know. I don't know that I can get away with putting a little tomato sauce. So that's yeah. an amazing, amazing idea. I, I just posted a, a video on the YouTube channel that I think is very important for a lot of people. You know, in the U.S. and Canada, there's tens of millions of people who have prediabetes and type 2 diabetes that is undiagnosed. Yes. And you guys may have seen my video the other day about how even though it's undiagnosed and you may not even have type 2 diabetes yet, if you have prediabetes, there's permanent damage being done to all of the tiny arteries all over your body, from your eyes to your brain to your heart to your kidneys to your penis, right? And we want everything to keep working. Okay. Therefore, you want to know if you have the least bit of prediabetes, you need to know that. And so a lot of doctors, when you go see them, they don't check an A1C for like an annual checkup. That's just not part of the labs they check. And so you could have severe type 2 diabetes and have a normal blood sugar with a fasting blood sugar check. And so your doctor's blind. He doesn't know if you have diabetes or not unless he checks an A1C. And I just posted a video about that on YouTube, and I think that'll help. And if any of you guys know somebody that you suspect might have diabetes or, you know, has a family history of it, they need to watch that video, and they need to go ask their doctor, hey, check my A1C. It's a big deal. And what else should we have checked from our doctors, Dr. Ken? And I ask you this because just because you haven't been diagnosed with something doesn't mean you don't have it. Since right. I've started doing keto and since doing regular lives with you, I realize a good majority of the things that we've discussed, I had these issues. They were just mm -hmm. undiagnosed. Right. So, so what's the if top you go of the your, laundry list? Yeah, so the, I'll tell you three very common ones. So if you go see your doctor and he for once a year checkup, right? And the insurance yep. is only going to pay for certain labs, very minimal labs in the U.S. And I suspect it's that way in Canada as well. But they'll, it'll pay for a basic metabolic panel, which checks your kidneys okay. and your electrolytes and a fasting blood sugar. It'll pay for a complete blood count, which checks for anemia and stuff like that. It'll pay for a, the lipid panel, of course, because they want to know what your cholesterol is. Mm -hmm. It might okay. pay for a TSH and it, pays for urine and that's it 
Now, you can have a normal TSH for that annual testing, right, and have severe hypothyroidism or severe hyperthyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis.